Well, good morning and uh, wel welcome to OCC on this uh, day. We can get to, to c celebrate and, and, and worship our, our, our Lord. So y Yawen and his team are here to, uh, to lead us and we look, always look forward to them being here and being part of our, 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 our gathering together. And so let's get ready to, to worship the Lord. And so Father, we know that you're in this place. And we know that you've invited us into this place. You invited us into your presence. Father, just help us to bring ourselves and to celebrate you and to worship you. And we declare that you are the one who's worthy of all praise and all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Is anybody exciting to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. I didn't hear anything yet. Are you excited in the house of the Lord? Yes. Let's stand together. Let's stand together, shall we? <laughs> we're going to stand together. <laughs> and we're going to worship God. It's good, 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 good Father. Amen? Amen? Because of His love, we are here today. Looking around your neighbor, give a high five and tell your neighbor, I see Jesus in you. Welcome to the church. We're going to have fun this morning because God is good. Amen? Amen. Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks because you are good, good Father. We bless your holy name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Lord, our oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, our oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all. One more time, Lord, our oh Lord. Lord, our oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, our oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your greatness. The oceans cry out to you. The mountains bow down before you. So I'll join with the earth and I'll give my praise to you. Lord, our Lord. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Lord, our Lord, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your greatness. The oceans cry out to you. The mountains they bow down before you. So I'll join with the earth and I'll give my praise to you. I will worship. I will worship you. Come on, with the hands up. I will worship. I will worship you. Sing it. you. Oh, in the spirit and in the truth, I will worship. I will worship you. I will worship you. I will worship you. You. In the spirit and in the truth, Lord God, I will worship you. We will worship you. Sing it. We will worship you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we will worship you. We will worship you. The heaven declare. The heavens declare your greatness. The oceans cry out to you. The mountains they bow down before you. So I join with the earth and I give my praise to you. Oh Lord, I will worship 
worship you one more time. I will worship you. Oh, you're the King of Kings. I will worship you. You never leave us or forsake us. I will worship you. You're the God of love. God of goodness and mercy, I will worship you. The heaven declare, the heavens declare your dreams. The oceans cry out to you. The mountains they bow down before you. So I'll join with the earth and I'll give my praise to you. praise to the Lord this morning. Jesus, we praise you. You are mighty God. The Bible speaks clearly that when the Spirit of God, there is a liberty, there is a freedom to worship Him. Amen. Do you the blind will see? Do you the mood will see? To you the dead will rise, to you our heart will pray, to you the darkness flee, to you my heart screams, I am free. Oh, to you the blind will see, to you the blind will see, to you the mood will see. To run. I am free. Oh, I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free to live for you. Oh, I am free. Strength from God. We praise the Lord. Everything that has spread, praise the Lord. Oh, I praise in the mountain. I praise in the mountain. I praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sore. Praise when I die. When I'm numbered, praise surrounded. I pray 
business of water, my enemy drowning. As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, I praise when I feel it. Praise when I don't. I praise because I know God. You are still in control. Every time, every day. My praise is a weapon. It's more than sound. My praise is the sound. That brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it inside? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, we praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise God, you suffering. Praise God, you reign. Praise God, you rose and defeated the grave. I praise God, you faithful. Praise God, you true. Praise God, there's nobody greater than you. I praise God, you sovereign. Praise God, you reign. Praise God, you rose and defeated the grave. I praise God, you faithful. Praise God, you true. Praise God, there's nobody greater than you.
gone before us. Lord, we will believe. Sing the song of wages to the land. Your name, your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name is the above the world. And dominions, all oh, powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angel cried, Holy, oh, the creation Yeah. 
We declare those truths into the depths of our souls, into your very presence. We worship you. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we offer you praise as, as long as we have breath. We bring a sacrifice of praise. And so, sometimes, Lord, that means we come to worship you even when we, we have struggles, even when we don't feel like lifting our hands and sit, lifting our voices in praise to you. But we choose to do that. We choose to walk in the celebration of who you are. And so we bless you. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thanks, team, for, 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 for leading us. We'll invite our uh, boys and girls to uh, head on out to uh, OCC Kids. And you, you, may, you may be seated. Let me uh, highlight a, couple of th a few things that are, are coming up. Uh, most significant event in the life of the church happens tonight as, as we gather to pray, pray at 6, 6, 630. And so let me, let me, let me you know, you, you hear me harp on this all the time, but I, I'm a firm believer that that's absolutely vital, that we, we spend time together in God's presence, pr praying and lifting up things before him. So that's tonight at 630. And then in a couple of weeks time on the, uh, the 2024th of, of March uh, is our a a a AGM. There's a sign up list in the, uh, at the wel welcome table there because there's a, a meal right after the service and so we need to have uh, num numbers for that. Uh, Mar Mark Ferrugia is pulling, pulling that together and again that's, that's a significant time. It's not just approving some new uh, leadership team members and, uh, and a budget but there's other things that we need to talk about and look at as, as, as a congregation and so that's, that's, Im that's important. So please, please sign up. A couple of other things. Um, Make sure that on, on your calendar this coming Saturday night is our, uh, is, is our monthly game, family games night. So bring a snack and come, come and join us. Um, the following week during March break on the 13th at 1 o'clock on the Wednesday is, uh, is, a, is a free matinee. Uh, so uh, we're showing uh, uh, my, my Migration, which is just, just, just out. And then on the 16th, the, the, the sort of the end, end of March break uh, is a men's, men's breakfast here at 8, 8, 8 o'clock at OCC. And so that, those are a number of things that are happening. There's, there's other events. Um, most of you uh, get an email version of this. If you didn't get one, uh, there's uh, physical copies out on the, uh, the table in the, uh, uh, right behind the, uh, the, the sound booth. And so you can check that out. We need to, uh, to come and, and we want, want to pray and, and there's, there's many needs here among folks uh, in, our, in our circles with health needs and other, other, other issues we need to lift up. Uh, I want us to uh, pray for, for Ethiopia. Um, those of you who are on part of the OCC prayer, prayer group will know that our friends Nick, Nick and em Emily um, Live in live in Bahadar, where I was originally planning on going, uh, and would be there right now. But uh, we, one of those God, God promptings says, no, this isn't this isn't the time to do it. So uh, Bahadar is un under siege. Uh, we're not sure whether the rebels have taken the city or not, but there was gu gunshots all this week, and so Nick and Emily and their three three kids, um, five and seven and three months old, uh, walked about seven kilometers to get to the air, 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 airport because there's no transportation, none of the bajajes or banks or any, anything's op open. And we're able to get one of the last flights out of Bahardar down to, down to Addis. And so uh, them and a couple of other uh, uh, SIM staff workers up, up, in, up in that city. So we really want to uh, pray, pray for that city, pray for people that we know. Um, Internet access is total, totally shut off in, in, in Bahadar, so any of my, my, my friends who live there, uh, or J J Jeremy's friends, that we're, we're hearing absolutely nothing, nothing from them right now. So let's, let's, let's pray for uh, that country and that city. And so Father, we, we come in Jesus' name. And we come and we, we celebrate who you are, that you are God, that you are at work even in the midst of the most horrendous things. Father, thank you the, for the provision of, uh, of a man with a cart to help carry uh, uh, supply, luggage for, for Nick and Emily and, and, and the family uh, as they got to the airport. 
th thank, thank you, Lord, that you provided for that and that they could pay him and that he can then provide some food for his family. Father, thank you that you are at work. And Lord, we don't understand the politics of Ethiopia. The more I go there, the less I understand. And so, Lord, I just pray. I pray that your, your will would be done, that you would break in in ways. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters, um, men and women who, who seek hard after you. And Father, I pray that as they minister to people, as they speak hope into, their, in, into the situations around them, Lord, just give them um, the, the, the right words, the right message, the right way of communicating, that people would find hope in you. Father, I pray that the violence would end. Still those guns in Bahadar and, and many other places around, around the country. Father, break in. You're, you're the only one who can do it. And so what we pray for Ethiopia, we, we, we know much the similar things are happening in places like Sudan and South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo and, and, um, uh, and Central African Republic and uh, Burkina Faso and the list goes on and on of places where there's huge violence. We think of, of Israel and Gaza. We, 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 we think of, of, of Yemen and Somalia and Djibouti and all these places where there's violence. Father, I pray for, for our brothers and sisters in those places that they would be able to speak your hope, your life in, 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 into, those, into those places, into those individuals. Father, help them to minister as only you can. Oh. Father, your word said, that, in fact, Jesus himself said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Spirit. And so, Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that they would know the power and the presence of your Spirit with them. And they would be able to live out that incredible peace that comes only from you. And so, Father, what we pray for them, we, we, we pray for ourselves as well. And Lord, you, you know all of the, the, the health concerns and the physical concerns and the, uh, the financial issues and the stresses and the, that, that happen in our own city, in our own congregation. And so, Father, I pray this morning that we'd be so aware of your presence with us. We'd be so aware that you are the God who is at work. And so I, I pray and invite you right now, just... Why don't you open your hands up and offer up to the Lord what it is you've come with this morning. That, that stress that's on your life, that, that pressure, that, that thing you're wondering about, the uncertainties, the pain, physical, emotional, spiritual, just offer it up to the Lord and say, this, this is who I am, Lord. I'm, this is what I'm coming with. And I bring it before you this morning. And as you open your hands before the Lord, be prepared to receive what God wants to pour into your life. That courage, that strength, he wants to pour into your life the reality of his presence. Help us to be so aware. Help us to pray with open hands. Someone wisely said we cannot pray with closed, with closed hands. We need to open our hands. And I think sometimes doing a physical action, physically opening our hands, helps us to open our spirits to receive what God wants to pour into us. And so, Lord, as we sit here with open hands, you speak into our lives. You minister, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. May you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Lent. This is probably the, uh, the most important month on the church calendar because it leads us up to the cross and to the resurrection. So we're in this, this season of Lent and there's lots of weird ideas that get floated around Lent, mostly about how giving up certain things helps you grow spiritually. Uh, now there's a certain degree in which that, that, that's true. You know, fasting, whether it's from food or from media, with, with the goal of, of setting time aside to focus on, on, on being with the Lord, to focus on, on ministry can be good. You know, fasting is not just a, a weight loss tool or a way of thinking you earn brownie points with, with God. You know, there's areas of, uh, of Ethiopia that are heavily in, influenced by, by or orthodoxy. And, uh, and so uh, we were there in, on Ash, Ash Wednesday, uh, Valentine, which coincided with Valentine's Day this year, February. And uh, many restaurants were closed because it was a fasting day. Uh, lots of restaurants in Ethiopia will have a fasting menu. And uh, it basically, this is the menu uh, without, without meat because some strict Orthodox will fast about 200 days per, per, per year. But the heart of what Lent's about, at the heart of this season, is an opportunity to recenter, to refocus on, on Jesus. And so we're going to be in, in Luke chapter 4 uh, for, for, for most of this month. And we're going to spend almost all of our time in this one chapter. We're going to look at some other passages, but, but we're going to begin in Luke 4 each, each Sunday. And specifically, we're going to start off by, by looking at the temptations that, that, that Jesus faced and how he, he conquered those temptations. And, and uh, so we're going to be look, look uh, we're not going to look at them specifically today, but over the next three weeks, we're going to un unpack uh, what those temptations that Jesus faced are. But let's, let's listen to and watch uh, the opening verses of, uh, of Luke chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world 
And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Life is more wild than tame, uh, more surprising than predictable, and God works within that mis mystery. Now, before we dig into the text, let me shift our thinking a little bit here. When we talk about wilderness, we're not talking about nice hikes in northern Ontario. We're, we're, we're talking about desert. We're, we're talking about rug, rug, rugged territory. It's the, it's the wildness. It's the wilderness of, of those, those locations. In fact, I, I specifically wore my hike, hiking boots this morning to, re, to remind us of that fact. This, this isn't the time for dress shoes. This is the time for hiking. I remember when I was at Regent College, I wrote a major paper in uh, Eugene Peterson's class on the wilderness journeys in, in the book of, uh, of Hebrews. And I, and I wore my hiking boots, and my hiking boots at that time were really old and beat up. And Eugene, I think, gave me some bonus points because I came dressed like that to, to a class talking about wilderness and, and, and hiking and, and, and the journey. So wilderness. Let, 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 me, let me think about how you think about two different word groups. First word group has words like tame and predictable, comfortable, safe, sustainable, content, peaceful, reliable, sure, rest. Second list includes words like wild and unpredictable, uncomfortable, dangerous, unsustainable, adventurous, alert, surprising, unsure, restless. You know, which Side, which group of words is immediately more attractive to you? And I, I think a lot of people will say, you know, that side there, the, 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 the right side, that, 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 that's more attractive. There's, there's something more appealing. It somehow, somehow seems more, more noble and adventurous to say so. But to be honest, I think most of us would say side one really has our heart. And having our heart it also has our bank account and our relational patterns and the lion's share of what we do on a daily basis. Why, why choose the wild and the unpredictable when we can have the tame and the comfortable? It's, it's right there beside us. And the question is, are we investing in creating a, a, a group one life, a life that's tame and predictable and peaceful, sustainable, restful, sure? Do our habits reflect that? Uh, does... How we handle our job reflect that. Do our relationships and the way we handle them reflect that? Or even more important, the, the big question, does the way that we follow Jesus reflect that? Even those who've, who've mastered ways of ordering and controlling their lives find the experience from birth to death wild and untamed, unruly, unpredictable, and inhospitable at times. I mean, I'm reading a novel right now, and uh, there, was a, there was a line in it yesterday, and it says, the thing that we are most afraid of, death, is the one thing that's guaranteed to happen. How, how do we respond to that? How, how do we think through that? You know, light, light, life in motion can overtake our best laid plans, our, our best planned out futures, and, and can lead those plans into chaos. Uh, and, and, and maybe you know people like, like I, I know, who've chosen a highly controlled life with little risk and highly managed relationships. But even for them, they're surprises. Pandemics 
social unrest, political upheaval, personal crisis, prisons of the, of the heart, of the mind, of the body. So many challenges break through and touch the most heavily fortified soul. But along the way of growing up in Christ, and by that I mean the long growing up, the long growing up that takes years and even decades to shape our spirit, we make a discovery that life is by nature unpredictable. It's what we call wild. And it's when it is unpredictable that we quickly discover who God is and who we are in him. Thomas Merton uh, was reflecting on the, the, the desert fathers who chose a wild and unpredictable life. They, they, they went into the desert uh, after the time of Constantine when, when Christianity became politicized and, uh, and became an empire. And he writes this, what the fathers sought most of all was their true self in Christ. And in order to do this, they had to reject completely the false formal self fabricated and their social compulsion in, in, in the world. See, the Holy Spirit does his most incredible work in us when things feel precarious and unsafe and unpredictable. And the Spirit reveals to us and affirms what he wants to do in us. Now, we, we, I don't saying we have to run away from the empires of the world and go into the desert to find, find our calling. But we do need to recognize that drifting into the acceptance of the status quo can slowly but surely kill us. Another word for, for calling or invitation from God to participate in with uniquely is the word vocation. Vocation comes from a Latin word vocare, which means to call. And our calling, bottom line, no matter what our careers or what our jobs are, our calling is to be disciples who make disciples. You know, that, that, that's why so many churches get, get, get messed up because we go after all sorts of, of other, other stuff. But the center of who we are called to be as individuals and as churches is disciples who make disciples. And in the wild and the unpredictable and ever-changing world, we need to listen hard for the voice of God. And when we're listening hard, and it's hard because it is hard, we hear the voice of God. The wild is a place of encounter with God and with ourselves. It's, it's a place we, we often don't want to go, but we choose to go there because the Spirit leads us there, and we're not content to remain as we are. In Luke chapter 4, uh, the first few, few verses, Jesus enters that place of the wild, the unpredictable, the isolated, for a purpose. It's a dangerous place for him to be, but it's the right place. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me read that passage for us again. It says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River, that's after he's, being baptized, after he's been baptized, and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. For 40 days, he endured temptations from the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And when they were completed, he was famished. And the devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it's written, man does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in a flash all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, to you I will grant this whole realm and the glory that goes along with it for it's been relinquished to me and I can give it to anyone I wish. So then, if you'll worship me, all this will be yours. And Jesus answered, it is written, you are to worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil brought him to Jerusalem, had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down from there. For it's written, he will command his, his angels concerning you to protect you. And with their hands, they will lift you up so you'll not strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, you're not to put the Lord your God to the test. And so when the devil had completed every temptation, he departed from him until a more opportune time. It was, a, it was a dangerous place for Jesus to be. <coughs> Excuse me. But it was also the right place for him. For a time and for an eternal purpose. God can be encountered anyway, anywhere. But it's in the wild, in, in the unruliness, in the lack of, of, of clear direction and clear promise with its sense of mist and averted destiny. It can be a unique place of encounter and formation for followers of Jesus. 
And so with Jesus, let's enter into the wilderness, the unknown, led by the Spirit. And we're going to do something a, a little bit different in a few minutes we have left. I'm, I'm going to walk us through a couple of these verses, and then I'm going to give us some time to, uh, to reflect, reflect on that. Uh, <coughs> Jesus is given the name by his Father. Jesus is the name his Father in heaven gave him. And to the Hebrews, a name means everything. And if you're a disciple, if you're a follower of Jesus, you're called by name. God calls you my son, my daughter. He says you're loved by him. And don't let anyone take that away from you. We need to keep that rooted and grounded in our thinking. What's known as, as the wilderness of, of Israel, the wild, the unruly, the, the untamed barren land, the, the, the desert life, the rock territory, locked life and food and water. It was a dangerous place to be. And Jesus goes there, armed only with God has given him. And Jesus goes in, 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 into that place, led by the spirit of, of the living God. And we, we humans need, need that understanding. Thanks. Uh, we, 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 we need salvation. Look, look at what we do, do to ourselves and to others. Our hearts, our tears, our lives need, need resolve and drying and healing. You know, we, we live and we love and we desire, we dream. But we also kill and we hate and we lust and we create nightmares from our desire to shape the world according to our own designs. Augustine put it this way. He, he said, our desires are disordered. Our desires are disordered. And we fail ourselves and others when we try to live without God at work in us. And into this world, into our world, your world, my world, a Savior comes, Jesus, and he models in heart and mind and body and purpose what it means to be truly good. And Jesus will face it all in the wilderness. All the temptations that will come to him. All the horrors of the heart that you and I face as, as human beings. And he does it without breaking covenant with his father. In his flesh and blood, we know Jesus moved into the world. He grew up in a family. He became a young man. And, and then in his 30s, he, he makes his move. And he shows up at the baptismal waters of John. And, and Jesus gets his calling from his heavenly father. It says in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Now, look, look at those, those phrases. You are my son. You know, Jesus' core identity and vocation is clear. To live as a son in perfect covenant relationship with his father. Jesus knows who he is. And then the voice from heaven says, whom I love. Jesus receives, and this is at the very beginning of his ministry, a word of affirmation and belovedness that will feed him for the rest of his life. Jesus has done nothing up to this point in terms of anything miraculous, in terms of anything that reflects his character as a savior. But Jesus knows who he, who he belongs to. <coughs> and with you, I am well pleased. And Jesus receives an affirmation of his value. As I said, even before he's done one miracle, Jesus knows why he is and what he must do that flows from it. But he doesn't gather his sense of purpose from anything other than the Father's love. And that needs to be true of us. Anything we do in terms of ministry, anything we do in terms of service has to flow out of that recognition that we are loved by Father God. And Jesus' vocation, his calling, his core identity, his essential nature is blessed and secured by the Father. And if you leave with nothing else this morning, if you discover nothing else from the season of Lent, know this. Jesus came so that you can know that you're a son, a daughter of God, that you're loved by God, and that God affirms you. At the time, after the time in, his, his, in, in the desert, Jesus, you, we'll, we'll look at this in a couple of weeks, stands up and, and, and proclaims um, that, that 
key missional passage. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Set me to proclaim liberty to the blind. Set a, recovery of sight to the blind. Set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And as he starts to unfold that, begins ministry that eventually leads him to the cross. But between Jesus' baptism and Jesus' proclamation from Isaiah lies the wild. Jesus has just had his name blessed, his belovedness settled, his intrinsic value affirmed, and now all of that is about to get tested. Yeah, God does testing. He tests his people. God tested Abraham and Moses, his people of Israel. And Jesus is, is isolated. He's alone. He, he's empty. You know, it said he was fasting. He went without food for 40 days and he was hungry. Now, most of us go for food without food for 40 hours and we're starving. But he recognized that this time of testing, he had to lean totally and absolutely on, on, on the Lord. To be tested means he could fail, but Jesus will not fail. He can face the questions down as he goes into the wild. And so what I want us to do, I'm, I'm going to read from Luke chapter 3 to uh, verse 21 down to the second verse of Luke 4. Just, just four verses. And I want you to sit with the text. I want you to, to listen to the text. I mean, I'm going to read it. It's also going to be on the screen. And as I, as I read the text, what's a word or a phrase that jumps out at you? Luke 3, 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Ask yourself, what word or phrase jumps out at you? And then ask yourself the question, why? Why did that word or phrase jump out at me? What, what sticks out to you about that? Think about that for a moment. What's, there's no right or wrong answer to that. But what's a word, a phrase that jumps out at you? As I read the passage again, I want you to pitch yourself in that scene. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. As you listen to that, what do you sense or, or feel or hear the Spirit of God saying to you? I'm going to ask you to do something that might be a little bit uncomfortable for some of you. But bear, bear with me and stretch yourself a little bit. We're, we're in the wilderness, remember, and there's wild stuff there. Turn to the person beside you or in front of you or behind you and just say, this is the phrase that, stuck, that jumped out at me. You don't have to explain why, but simply share that phrase or that word. So take 20 seconds to do that. <laughs>
Now that, that wasn't too hard, was it? No, 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 nobody died, died of fright, fright doing that. To succeed on, on the spiritual battlefield for our soul, we, we need to go to the front lines of our appetites, tamed and desperate and, and, and hungry for God. And if you knew you were going to enter into the greatest challenge you have ever faced, the greatest challenge you've ever faced, facing your life, how, how would you prepare? How, how would you get your strength strength up? Would you go into a long season of, of mental and, and physical resistance training? Would you stock up on, on healthy food and drink resources to make sure all of your appetites are, are satisfied? Or would you fast, eat nothing for 40 days? You know, Jesus understood that he would be at his peak reception to the Father's voice, at his greatest resistance to the enemy's voice, by fasting his way into the wild. Now fasting, whether it's physical fasting from food or, or setting aside social media or, 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 or TV or, or whatever, it's where we say no to some of our desires, our appetites, to our, our tempting tastes, so we can say yes to God's desires, and God's will, and God's direction. By saying no to himself, Jesus was ready to say no to the enemy of his soul and say yes to the purposes of God. So for the next couple of, next week, few weeks, we're going to unpack these, these, uh, these other temptations that Jesus failed and look at how they, they live themselves out in, in our lives. Let's, let's pray. Lord of the wild, we don't choose to go to places where, where danger might meet us. But in your story, we see the Spirit leading you into a place of, of risk and challenge. Give us the grace to be led by you into, into the places that may, may challenge us and stretch us, that, we, that will also prove that faith is alive in our hearts. Enable us to walk in step with your Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together, shall we?
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with that hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As you